Peace be with you. Continue with our opening hymn, Open Our Eyes, Lord.
Thanks be to God. The second reading is from the third chapter of James, verses 1 through 12. Not many of you should become teachers, my fellow believers, because you know that we who teach will be judged more strictly. We all stumble in many ways. Anyone who is never at fault in what they say is perfect, able to keep their whole body in check. When we put bits in the mouths of horses to make them obey us, we can turn the whole animal. Or take ships as an example. Although they are so large and are driven by strong winds, they are steered by a very small rudder whenever the pilot, wherever the pilot wants to go. Likewise, the tongue is a small part of the body but it makes great bolts. Consider what is a great force to set on fire by a small spark. The tongue also is a fire, a word of evil among the parts of the body. It corrupts the whole body, sets the whole course of one's life on fire, and itself set on fire by hell. All kinds of animals, birds, reptiles, and sea creatures are being tamed and have been tamed by mankind. But no human being can tame the tongue. It is a restless evil, full of deadly poison. With the tongue we praise our Lord and Father, and with it we curse human beings who have been made in God's likeness. Out of the same mouth from praise and cursing, my brothers and sisters, this should not be. Can both fresh water and salt water flow from the same spring? My brothers and sisters, can a fig tree bear olives, or a grapevine bear figs? Neither can a salt spring produce fresh water. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please stand as you wish for our gospel acclamation. Lord, let my heart be good so far. Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? 
If anyone is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Christ. You may be seated. I don't know what to do with Jesus. This question I have uh, been asked a few times um, since I started this journey um, to become a member of the clergy. And I think about it. I mean, I can understand God, sort of. Omnipotent, omniscient, creator, maker of everything that is seen and unseen. I can kind of understand that and wrap my head around it. I can even understand the Holy Spirit, a God that moves through us to inspire us, moves across the waters of creation, changes our hearts and minds to this day. I can wrap my head around it. But what do I do about Jesus today? And I wonder if his disciples, especially Peter, in this moment that we read about, pondered that same question. Surely Peter did. Imagine, if you will, this dialogue that they're talking about. Jesus asks them, who do they say that I am? And Peter says, you are the Messiah. Great. Keep that to yourselves. What? Why? What do I, why do we have to keep that to ourselves? We've been praying so long. We've been waiting for a Messiah. Somebody that's going to come be a messenger from God and kick the Romans' butts. Keep that to yourself, Jesus says. Then he continues on with, the Messiah must suffer great things and be killed. Wait, what? Hold on a second, Peter says. You can't die if you're the Messiah. You've got to kick Rome out of here. And we're going to be victorious. Peter, you're thinking of earthly things and not of the kingdom of heaven, godly things. You're thinking too small. So again, Peter probably pondered this to himself and said, what am I going to do with this Jesus? This is not the Messiah that the people have been talking about for hundreds of years. God, who has created the heavens and the earth, all-powerful, knowing God, God who is eternal, past, present, and future, God who watches over us, walks with us as we pay our bills and go to the doctor and that nervous anticipation, is it good news or bad news? God who is with us as we stare into the cupboard trying to figure out what are we going to make for dinner tonight? God who sits beside us when we get angry or when we're horribly sad. Wait a minute. Does God know that about me? I mean, God's omnipotent. God's creator of the universe. How does he know all of my personal little struggles that I deal with that I think are way bigger than they possibly are? That's the story of Jesus. That's where Jesus fits into the picture. Think about all the things in the Gospels about Jesus how it relates to you and I as being human beings. Born. He goes to school. Remember him in the temple with the elders and then quizzing him and he gives it right back to them? Jesus probably lost a parent. We don't hear much about Joseph after the birth story. Jesus makes friends, his disciples. Jesus loses a friend. Lazarus dies. Jesus wept, it says. Jesus gets angry. He goes to the temple. He goes to the temple and flips tables. Certainly I can relate to being angry and wanting to flip over a table. Jesus gets arrested. Okay, well, I don't have that experience. That's not one thing I share with Jesus. But others do. Jesus suffers pain when he's, after he's arrested. He's beaten and whipped off. 
and Jesus faces his own death and has to consider that. And he does die. That's where Jesus fits into the picture. So that we can know that God can relate to us and our problems. That God sees us. God understands everything that we are going through. This is not to undermine the extraordinary salvation that Jesus provides in his death and resurrection, the forgiveness of sins. It is merely an additional thing to say, God understands you. Jesus was saying, for you, Mary, and June, John. God forgives your sins, Bruno, and Meryl, and Sue, and Ina. God wants to be in relationship with each and every one of us. God wants to relate to us. So that's why Jesus. Because God cares so much about us that he is willing to give up his throne of grace and mercy and come down and walk as one of us and experience everything that we have learned. That's what you do with Jesus. You take that into your heart and say, God gets me. Everything that I'm going through in this moment and the next moment, God gets me. God chose me. God chose you, Paul. God chose you, Karen. God chose you, Gina. God chose us. That's pretty special. That's pretty wonderful. So that's what you can do with Jesus. Please stand as you wish. And we'll continue with holy, holy, holy.
Um, please sign up for those as you are able. Uh, the announcements, of course, are on a handy, dandy little takeaway in your bulletin. You can take them home and put them up on your bulletin board or on your fridge. Um, the biggest thing is that this Tuesday's church council meeting, woohoo! Seriously, though, come to the church council meeting. Uh, come see what your church um, is planning, is doing. Be part of the active in your church community. Uh, thank you so much. Game night was last night. It was bingo. There was about a dozen of us. We had a good time, I think, right? John's not looking for me. Said, you know, like he's not looking. <laughs> John calls bingo, so he doesn't even get to play. He doesn't get the thrill and the excitement. <laughs> but he did teach me something last night. When the caller <clears throat> goofs up, calls him up, you're supposed to boo them. <laughs> I didn't know this. I mean, that, that's great to be given that. <laughs> um, food bank was this Wednesday as well. We had about 30 families. 30 families that came through. Wonderful. That's awesome. Again, uh, it's every other Wednesday, so not this Wednesday, but the following Wednesday. If you'd like to help with that, please come at 7.30 a.m. And then the uh, food bank goes from 8 until 10. Thursdays, every every Thursdays, every week, you can come and play dominoes um, with the community here. Um, don't let me scare you. I mean, I know I, they are very cutthroat, but they're also very nice people, so. Um, so come and take part in that as well. Um, anything else on my I'm forgetting. Yes? I would like to say something. Okay. I don't realize, know whether you realize, but out there on that table as you go exit, there are all kinds of reading materials that are free for people to take. Yes. It's not just Christ in our home. There are other reading materials that help yourself to them and they get sent to us to pass along to you all. So. Anything that looks interesting, feel free to take. Oh, also, there, so there were uh, a couple of women who were here last Sunday um, from a different church in the area. And coming up, they have a women's revival. Um, and they asked if they could put out some flyers. So there are flyers for that on the table. Um, so if you are interested in that, in the women's revival, there's a little flyer out there so you can put that on your calendar as well. I don't know if I'm missing anything. Okay, please stand as you wish. Let us continue with our offering prayer. Blessed are you, O God, source of every gift of your creation. By these gifts with our lives, help us to serve one another and all in need through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. We'll continue with our offering him. We are an offering. together in the power of the Holy Spirit, we pray with confidence for the church, God's good creation, and all who are in need. We pray for the church throughout the world. Form us into committees of forgiveness and grace. 
Help us to notice where you are calling us into new relationships. And give us courage to embrace the uncomfortable and unfamiliar. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We pray for the earth and all its inhabitants. Protect lands at risk of wildfires and heal dying forests. Where fire brings destruction, raise up new growth. Guide us in tending precious ecosystems. Hear us, O oh God. Your, Your mercy is great. Is great. We pray for all those who are ill, all who are lonely or anxious, and all who grieve. We especially pray for those who are on our prayer list in our bulletin, those we hold silently in our hearts or say aloud to you now. Draw them close to you and soothe them with the promise of your enduring love. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. We pray for teachers, professors, librarians, school administrators, staff, and all who support this, the education of young people. Sustain them as they shape learning communities rooted in equity and authenticity. We pray for children of all ages in their learning. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We remember our beloved dead, who with great cloud of witnesses bear witness to your saving grace. Accompany us in our pilgrimage of faith, that we too place our hope and trust in you. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. We entrust these and all our prayers to you, holy God, in the name of your beloved child, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. We gather at this table remembering with joy and thanksgiving that in the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Then again, after the supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to those saying, take and drink. This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. So as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we proclaim Jesus Christ the Lord until he comes again. Gathered together in one faith, let us pray the prayer our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Jesus welcomes everyone to this table. Come, eat and live. All are welcome here. The bread is gluten-free. There is juice in the center and wine on the outside. You may be seated. Come forward at the usher's direction. Um, I will leave one more communion space to Janice.
Please stand as you wish. Let us pray. Holy God, you have welcomed us to this meal and fed us with dignity at your table. Send us now to welcome others and to be at peace with one another. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. God Almighty, God most merciful, bless you and keep you and give you peace. Amen. Let us finish our service by reading our mission statement together and go out with our closing song. We are an imperfect people, seeking to make the love of Christ visible and accepting and walking with all in our community.